Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and comment below. Before I bring on my guest today, I'll just let you know that I have Regina Rand coming on the show on Thursday. Um, as you know, Regina's uh, late husband, Randy Rand, a uh, founding member of Autograph, passed away sadly a couple of years ago. And she's decided after two years um, to come on and talk about her um, her late great husband. So looking forward to that. And if you're an Autograph fan, come on back. Now I've got a legend of his own right, guitarist Joel Holkstra. I don't know how many bands he's been in, but the most recent one, um, well, the most recent hard rock band would be Accept. How are you doing, Joel? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Great to see you again, bud. Hey, uh, always a pleasure and always a pleasure um, um, corresponding with you, even during with Facebook and stuff. You're so respectful. I wanted to ask you, what was it like touring with Accept? I mean, that kind of can be a standard question, but I mean, what differences were there from, say, touring with any other band? Because I remember reading a lot of press that you were so honored, so you're obviously a fan of the band. Um, so what was um, kind of a routine that you had and something that uh, may be different than, say, Whitesnake? Um, well, I mean, this is something that is like a fill-in situation. Um, it's something that lined up this year where their guitarist uh, is off doing something else and they needed somebody to fill in and it worked out that you know it gave me the opportunity to get out with the band and um tour latin america which we've already done so we finished uh, the south america uh run essentially and that went really well with their and um you now i'm i headed off and did a uk run with brandon gibbs an acoustic uh run and basically came back for a little time here and now I'm going to head to Europe uh, to do the, the festival run over there with Accept. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's great. They're, music, they're probably the heaviest band that I've played with in terms of, you know, the style of music. It's pretty much, you know, more metal than it would be like hard rock. Um, so there's a difference stylistically and there's a difference in every single gig you do logistically in terms of the way things work and, you know, you just kind of like go in and and uh, try to learn the ins and outs of how every camp works, you know, when, when you go into a situation like that. And so but they're all great people, really nice, great musicians. You know, um, Wolf is a, you know, very talented guitarist and super nice guy. And it's great to be working with them a bit, you know, just, um, you know, it's uh, it work sounds like a kind of boring word for it. I mean, you get to rock out. I mean, um the shows had a lot of energy in South America. It was fun playing that style of music for like crazy crowds like that. I mean, the one show, I think it was in, in Chile where the, the mosh pit was happening and a guy lit off a flare inside the building and they inside. were like, dancing around it. Yeah. And I mean, it was like, whoa like <laughs> we're we're not in kansas anymore and uh so they everybody was dancing around it and uh and it was just uh, it was like a crazy really raw rock and roll scene man to see um so yeah uh very very interesting um to to be a part of um but i'm i'm having a great time with those guys really I read also that uh, they were very, I think uh, somewhere on social media, they were very impressed when you came in, you knew all the songs, or they said primarily, he came in, he knew all the stuff, like you knew the licks and everything, you picked everything up seamlessly. Is that just because of your musical training, or is it because you kind of know the Accept and the uh, uh, Wolf kind of guitar style that he brings? Um, I mean, that's just like my preparation like work ethic for a gig you know when i when i go in to do something that tends to be the way that i've gotten a, a head in life but yeah. just with in terms of that's a whole lot of it just doing a lot of homework before you go in like you know as much as possible being as good as possible um so yeah i mean i just try to try to prep me hard and show them the situation in proper respect and you know, that's that usually gets returned if you if you treat situations with respect and don't go in and kind of, you know, right. give your half asset, so to speak, you know. So, um, you know, I just want to go in and show the fans proper respect and the band proper respect and and 
you know, hopefully everybody will have a good time. I mean, it's a cool, like unique little situation to have me play with them. It's only going to be this little window, you know, like America and the festivals and no, no time for fights backstage and <laughs> stuff like that. We no don't need time. to involve anything like that. It's just, you yeah. know, it, yeah, we, we can remain in the honeymoon phase and, and yeah. uh, yeah. And yeah, so it, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great fun to work with those guys and, and, um, you know, it's not anything like permanent that we're looking at. So nobody has to freak out over anything. It's just like, I think, you know, I'm very appreciative of, of them having me in because they could have probably had any number of guitarists come in and do it. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, they seem to be appreciative of me coming in and, and treating it with respect and everything. So, so, um, speaking of Wolf, okay. And the cyborg, right. I, I mentioned to Mark Tornillo when I interviewed him that uh, Wolf looks like a cyborg. Does he really look like that in person? Like he looks so polished and chiseled and he doesn't look like he's aged. Like, I mean, can you give uh, the viewers maybe a, a bit of a background on maybe his day-to-day -day prep routine? Does he wake up and work out and then work out and then work out, go on stage and then work out and then go on stage and never sleep? Like, how does he do it? Um, I actually don't know. I mean, I didn't really track him on like, you know, like around the clock in terms of what he was doing and when, what he was after. But I think, you know, living a fairly healthy lifestyle, I know yeah, he was yeah. eating pretty healthy. And, um, so yeah, I, I agree. I think he looks amazing, um, up there and lo looks like a star up there and everything like that. And it's fun for a change. I don't have to shrink myself because we're actually like identical in height. Um, he and I. So <laughs> when I stand side by side with him on stage, it's kind of fun for a change because normally I'm, I'm used to having to kind of make myself look shorter to look right with every other guitarist I work with. And um, so he's the I, same I, height as me. Yeah, I, I didn't realize he was he was that tall, to be honest with you. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. So um, we kind of I don't know. We 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 have like a, a similarity in that regard. And then obviously I've got the, the hair. Yeah, the mop of hair, and he's got the cool, like, you know, like you said, kind of like almost like the humanoid. Uh, yeah, yeah. the, the shit. And I think, I mean, personally, I think it looks great. You know, I think he looks really cool. Um, so, you know, I, I think we look, we look good up there together, a fun time. And, you know, he's, 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 he's fun to rock out with, man. I mean, there's a lot of great riffs in that music, and, um, you know, playing it tight together is a whole yeah. lot of the fun. Any, any kind of pranks? On, on tour um any buckets I, of blood paint i can't say not not yet there, there hasn't been any like practical jokes or anything like that i mean there's, there's lots of laughs in bands i mean you know we're all just like overgrown children at a point you know out there mm -hmm. doing what we do but um you know i mean it's it's a fun camp they're great guys and but i can't nothing comes to mind in terms of like practical jokes or anything of that nature <laughs> so um everybody that's tuning in obviously knows you play with share i mean just like t oh that's what i was going to talk to you about so when you get back from europe you're going to start prepping for a tso trans-siberian orchestra how how many years have you been in that band again since 2010 yeah so um amazingly enough i'm a, a veteran these days um yeah, I mean, it's a, that's something I'm just honored to be a part of. Incredible production um, in in so many regards. You know, the charitable work, um, starting with the O'Neill family, everything they do. You know, a dollar from every ticket sold goes to local charities. And, yeah. um, you know, all the way down to um, just being a part of something that's so unique. You know, Paul O'Neill's vision with that, I think probably had a lot of people scratching their heads when he talked about it at first, you know, like going, you really think that's going to work? And, and he, you know, gets the last laugh because it's really turned out to um, ingrain itself in terms of, uh, you know, certainly North American Christmas culture, certainly in the U S at least, you know, it's like synonymous with Christmas at this point in time that you hear Trans-Siberian Orchestra. So mm -hmm. um it's great to be a part of the guys in the band are all you know good friends of mine now we've been together yeah. for so long that we got a, a cool bond and, and just you know can read each other's minds musically pretty much at this, this stage of the game so um you know that's awesome to be a part of and and just uh like you know it's a great uh 
talent pool. Like there's a lot of very, very talented people in that building, especially for rehearsals. There's a West band and an East band, right? So mm. we have rehearsals, we're all in there together and you just look around the room and it's like, man, there's so many talented people. Not only that, but a backup band and the backup band is all talented people too. So, you know, you're pretty much in a building with a, a whole lot of very, very talented musicians. Some of the, the, the most talented people in rock these days. So it's, it's cool to be a part of. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Um, didn't mean to cut you off. So um, are you writing uh, any more Holster 13 music right now? Any, um, any kind of, I don't know I haven't heard anything, but any um, white snake news uh, or anything, or is that still kind of just a no, wait and see? It's pretty much in a holding pattern and anything yeah. that would happen in that world will come from David and, and yeah. you know, Holster 13. I, I'm like working on another album. Um, it's just a matter of me kind of, finding the time to do it these days i've been on on tour so much and kind of constantly prepping for the next set um mm -hmm. you know even between the uk and going to europe i had two um dates isolated dates with broadway's rock of ages band and needed to review that set and travel and go do those one was in vegas one was upstate new york here so um you know between that and remote teaching and all the other things i have going on you know um it's 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 like all right sooner or later i've got to find time to actually make my own music happen here so yeah and, and, and i was just speaking with um mr eric martin and uh we talked about uh, how tough it is sometimes being on the road and you're constantly on the road and then like you said you, you teach remotely um is it something that's just an ingrained passion that you cannot say no to touring or is it because I know I'm, I know you you wouldn't be doing it for the money at this point I'm sure you're uh, you got yourself padded pretty good so how do you make those decisions on when to stay home with the family when to go and, and that sort of thing it must be tough at times um I mean in general I just have a, a philosophy of working hard for me to make living and all that good stuff but just in that it actually makes better as a musician too so you won't mm -hmm. force yourself to to do the work because you know it makes you better so right. um at the end of the day that still is uh something that i'd like to um like to have happen i always cite jeff back in that regard you know it's like he just was one of those guys that kept getting better all the way till the day he died. It was like Jeff Beck just was, got better, better and better and better. You know? right. So I would like to do it myself too and just kind of keep continuing to improve on guitar. So, so you're kind of insinuating that by, by, by the, all the touring, not only are you getting better with guitar, but you might be immersing yourself with different uh, musicians that might leave a mark. In, in, in your well, I think, you know, ultimately you got to find you got to find real world applications for the music you know um yeah. i'm not a, you know a content creator so i don't have a whole lot of interest in sitting around looking to create the perfect reel or something like mm. that to put to social media and right uh, so i mean obviously here and there but you know I've, I've got my toes in the water with some of the collab videos i did with dino jalustic etc during yeah. covid a lot of that stuff did really well um, in terms of views and all that stuff. But I, I just, you know, that's not why I got into playing guitar. I don't really mm -hmm. want to, you know, I, I prefer the real world applications to kind of try to better myself. So the more I can do that, the better I get at. Right on. So won't keep you any longer. I know that uh, you've been doing some presser days. Uh, looks like you have a bunch of people walking behind you. Um, when would you expect maybe it to release uh, Hoaxer 13's uh, next album? Oh, you gosh, started, I don't have I, it. Kind of you haven't even started writing? I yeah. No, I did. I've got the album pretty much written riff. So oh, okay. I just got to get it over to the other musicians and get it rolling. So, yeah, early okay. stage. Perfect. I'll leave links below, everybody, uh, to go to Joel's website and check out uh, Ultra 13 Music. It's great. If you're in Europe, uh, make sure to check them out with Accept. I wish... Uh, uh, is there any plans to do any more American uh, shows with Accept? Do you know? I mean, they're going to be touring, but most likely Phil will be back playing guitar with them. Um, so I, will, I won't be a part of the U.S. stuff here. Uh, I'll be up with uh, doing the gigs with Brandon Gibbs and uh, Broadway's Rock of Ages Band, etc.
Right on. Once again, Joel Hoekstra, everybody from uh, White Snake, the Share, Trans Siberian Orchestra, Ultra 13, except, I don't know, who am I missing? Night Ranger. I could go on for, I don't know, 10 minutes, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a pretty long list. Somebody asked me, how many bands are you a part of right now? And I tried to think. I thought, okay, well, White Snake, Trans Siberian Orchestra. Um, I guess from there you'd have to go to the recording stuff, Revolution Saints, yeah. Iconic, Joel Hoekstra's 13. Then you go to the live stuff, Hoekstra Gibbs, right? Um, Broadway's Rock of Ages band and temporarily accept. So I think I'm right now, I'm currently at eight. If I, uh, when I, when I thought about, I guess that is a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you must be doing something right because you look great. You're very uh, generous with your time. And uh, like I said, thanks so much for your time, Joel. And we'll talk to you soon. Hey, man, my pleasure. Thank you. Right, right back at you. Appreciate it.